Are you building a bimini or a stand for new solar panels? Then you're probably using stainless steel tubing. Your project will depend on making clean, square cuts. But how do you do that on round tubing? Hi there. I'm Nika Waters, filling in for Carolyn Sherlock on the Boat Galley podcast. And today I'm sharing Carolyn's six tips about how to make the best cuts of stainless steel tubing right on the boat. Today's episode of the Boat Galley podcast is sponsored by FastSeas.com. Plan your next passage using FastSeas.com. Whether you're after speed or comfort, FastSeas will find the optimum route to your destination. FastSeas, making weather routing simple. That's F-A-S-T-S-E-A-S.com. Use coupon code GALLEY for an exclusive 10% discount. And if you're planning on a passage and going somewhere, having a bimini or solar panels can make your life so much easier. But how in the world do you cut stainless tubing squarely? If you don't have a full shop with a vise, it can be really hard to make a nice clean square cut in stainless tubing. And the more square you can make it, the more securely your connectors will fit together and how much stronger the overall structure will be. Carolyn found these hints when they were working to beef up the stainless on their dinghy davits because they wanted to add a new large, large solar panel on there. And they only could get the stainless tubing in half foot increments and they needed to dry fit it and mark exactly how long it needed to be, plus they were reusing one old section of tubing to make two shorter diagonal supports. The best way that they found to make these cuts, working in the cockpit with minimal tools, involved a hacksaw and a sharpie. They tried using the Dremel tool to cut and found that yes, sure, the Dremel tool works, It's going to take forever. And no, they don't have a stainless tubing cutter, which would be a worthwhile investment if you're going to do a few of these bigger projects. There is a link to one designed for stainless on Amazon in the show notes. Still though, even if you have a tubing cutter and even if you have a Dremel tool, it helps to mark the tube and begin the cut with a file as described below so that neither one of those cutters wobbles or spirals. If you're using a hacksaw, and that's the description in this podcast, first of all, a full-size hacksaw would be faster than a mini hacksaw, but a mini hacksaw is better for working in confined spaces. So if you don't have space to carry every tool, that might be a compromise that you have to make. A new blade helps an awful lot with a hacksaw, so you might want to get a new blade just for this project. And something that Nika and Jeremy have found is that having cutting oil actually helps a whole lot when you're dealing with a hacksaw and any kind of stainless. You're going to start by dry fitting the parts together as much as possible. And you want to make a small mark where it needs to be cut. Use a Sharpie or a piece of tape to see where that initial mark is going to go. And then you mark all the way around the tube using a carpenter square to keep it square. You can also use one of the fittings if you have a type of bimini fitting that encircles the whole tubing because that will have a square line, a straight line on it. And Carolyn and Dave use a Sharpie to make the mark that's on there. And marking all the way around absolutely helps make a square cut because it gives a visual reference all through the cutting process as the blade is going. You can make sure that it's staying straight. Then, and this is critical, Take a small triangle file and etch where you will start the cut. This is super important because it helps keep the hacksaw or the Dremel or the cutting tool from slipping. And now you're ready to hacksaw. With the blade in the groove that you've made with the file, you get started slowly until you've got a straight line established. A couple of suggestions are to make sure you've got towels or paper towels underneath because you will get metal filings on there and even though it's stainless steel if it gets onto the deck it can leave marks and having that cutting oil does actually speed things up and keep things nice and cool for the tool 
And as you cut, you might get to the point where the tubing starts to V and bind the hacksaw. And you can tell when your hacksaw starts to bind because you'll feel it. And this is where a second pair of hands very much helps because instead of just holding the tubing, you might be trying to even out the tubing so that it isn't Ving down together as the person cutting is cutting. And after you have successfully cut through your stainless tubing, make sure you use a file to smooth the cut end or you will cut yourself. It's super, super, super sharp. So cutting stainless steel tubing can feel a little bit daunting, particularly if you're really looking for a square cut. But with these tips, you can be cutting straight cuts in your stainless steel tubing in no time at all. I can't wait to share an anchorage with you when we're not having to cut stainless steel because it's all cut and put together and beautiful and part of our lovely kit. And we get to toast to our incredible good fortune at being able to live this amazing lifestyle. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love hearing from our listeners. We love it when you share us with your friends. We love it when you don't forget to subscribe. And if you leave a five-star review, that will help other people find us. The Boat Galley is all about making boat life better. And we certainly hope we've done that for you today. Today.